offering time hallelujah we're here to give unto the king of kings and lord of lords given the the ministry praise god so he can take our, our 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 seeds that we sow in love into the kingdom and cause us to reap of love in the kingdom why because we give because we love god and love people hallelujah so that's why i tithe and that's why i give praise his holy name man we're just so thankful that jesus makes a way for us to be able to be blessed financially so we can give more to his kingdom to bless all over the world and our community praise his holy name 
Man, don't don't forget that every fourth Sunday is Mission Sunday, and any month we have a fifth Sunday, it's Stretch Offering Sunday. So, man, just be praying, you know, to the Father and ask Him to give you money to give into those times. It's only four times a, a year we have Stretch Offering, and then every month we have Missions. But just remember, you know, John chapter 15, verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and you shall receive it. So that's what I base my giving on. I ask him, you know, for extra money to send to me so that I can give extra into his kingdom. And I just believe that his word's true. And if I do what his word says, he'll do what his word says. Hallelujah. So don't be speaking things against you being able to give into his kingdom. If something arises and an offering happens and you can't give, say, well, praise God, Lord, I don't know what happened this time, but I'm just thankful that next time I'm going to have plenty enough money to give. And bind the devil from interfering with your, your money and your finances and command him to take his hands off of it because that's more your responsibility than God's because he's done gave me and you all the power to take care of that. So I bind the enemy from stopping the finances that belong to the people that will give into the kingdom and give to True Christian Fellowship. I command you to take your hands off the money that belongs to our church and I thank you, Lord, the money's coming in to build our church and to buy a van for fellowships. Hallelujah. And for, for the teens and the other people to have it to drive so everybody can ride together. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, don't forget, you know, just write on your envelope your full address. Write on your envelope what what place you want the money to go into. And there's three things that ain't on here in that stretch offering. So anytime you put in the stretch offering, you just write stretch on here somewhere. And anytime you put into the, the new church or building, just write new church. And anytime you put into the van, just write van on there. Hey, and, and we'll, um, you know, when we get new ones, we'll have that added on probably. But we're just thanking the Lord for taking care of every situation, every circumstance in our church, always coming through, and He always shows out. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank You right now. We praise You right now. We give You glory right now. We, we lift up our offerings to worship You from here, and we're thanking You that You're doing things above what we could even ask or think. And we give you all praise for meeting every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. Ain't Jesus just wonderful? Hallelujah. Greatly to be praised. Well, it's Wednesday night. Praise God. We're just flying through this year already. It's already the middle of February. So we just thank God for t being with us every day, taking us through every day. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about grace. Hallelujah. Grace. And, you know, a lot of people in the church call it God's unmerited favor and, you know, different things. But we know that grace is is a is a decision in one's heart you have to make a decision to follow after jesus and to obtain grace uh, you have to repent of the things that you're doing to get grace to activate in your life so that it gives you the ability not to sin amen a lot of people thinking in the church today for some reason that great gives you the grace gives you the ability to sin no, grace gives you the ability not to sin. Paul said, should we sin more that grace should abound? Then he said, God forbid. So we shouldn't be leaning on grace as a crutch to take us through this life and we can do what we want to and think that, well, grace covers it so when we die we're going to heaven anyway. No, grace will make you run to the cross and run to Jesus and repent so you can obtain grace in a time of need and mercy in a time of need. And you can run with Jesus in holiness because grace gives you the ability not to sin. Hallelujah. Well, let's start off with 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. I'm reading out the Amplified Version of the Bible. And it says, But He said to me, My grace, my favor, love and kindness and mercy is enough for you. When we read this, Jesus is telling Paul here, He's saying, I, I, I'm enough for you. Jesus is enough. Me and you have got to understand as we go through life that our Master, Savior, Jesus Christ, He is enough. He's enough to get me and you through anything. So as we uh, go here and we go through life, we got to look to Him as the, His favor, His love and kindness, His mercy. Jesus is enough for me and you. Hallelujah. 
he said, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. And manfully just means bravely. So he gives us the power through his grace to face any trouble that comes against us, any danger that comes against us. And he gives us the ability through his grace to face this trouble, to face this situation and be brave. But brave because of me and you? No, brave because of him, because of Christ because of what he's done and continues to do at the cross at the cross it's finished so he done it all at the cross and me and you just got to follow him and what he did at the cross praise God bravely we can look at any situation that faces us that comes against us and know that Jesus will take us through it through his grace he says, for my strength and power are made perfect they're, they're fulfilled and completed fulfilled and completed and his 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 strength and power shows themselves most effective in my weaknesses in your weaknesses his strength his power shows itself more effectively in mine and your weaknesses and he comes through and shows himself powerful no matter what we're going through no matter what our life looks like if we'll trust Jesus and look to him he'll make it look like it's easy because it's in His strength, His power, that He'll make our weaknesses look like they're nothing if we totally trust in Him. He said after that, He says, Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest Paul saying, now that I see this, now that I understand that His strength is more powerful in my weaknesses, he said, now I look more gladly and glory in my weaknesses and infirmities. Why? That the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest. May rest. What does that mean? Yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. Man, we're looking for the, the, the strength and power of Christ the Messiah to dwell over us, to pitch a tent over us, to, to stay there and abide with us. Where His grace and glory is and His presence is and He's pitching a tent over you, man, you are happy in Jesus. You, you, you look like Paul when you say, no longer I live, but Christ liveth in me. And the hope of glory lives in me. So when you get that revelation like Paul did, I want him to pitch a tent of his glory and pitch a tent of his strength and his grace and pitch a tent of his power over me. Amen. So, so that He's there watching over me. He's there dwelling in my life. He's there taking care of everything that I face. Why? Because He is just flat out in love with me. That's who Jesus said. Jesus is just flat out in love with me and you. And ain't nothing people would do to make me think any otherwise. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 9. Praise God, man. I just, I just enjoy talking about grace. Hallelujah especially when you know what it is and you know it ain't a crutch to take you on through life here to where you can do what you want to and still think you're going to heaven. Now, when you really find out grace, when, when you tap into that and you, you repent and get grace to show up, it gives you the ability not to sin no more. Man, that's wonderful. That's great news for, for people that are caught in anything, that's bound to anything, addicted to anything. Grace can set you free. It can set you free. Amen. Verse 9 says, Not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. No, it, it ain't because of what law did. If, if law could have took care of everything, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. But we can't boast in that we obeyed the law and did what Je the, the law told us to do in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. We can't boast in that and think we had anything to do with it. It ain't got nothing to do with the new created life in Christ Jesus. No, you can't boast about that. It's not the result of what anyone can possibly do. No one, so no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. So you, you can't do it. You can't take glory to yourself. Why? Because you have to look to Jesus. And, and, and verse 8 says, For by His free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. See, that's the only way me and you can do it is follow Jesus Christ and do what He's saying. That's the only way we can make it through this, uh, through this thing and, 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 and is to follow His plan and what He said to do. Jesus is the one that can take me and you from this to that from, but in His grace and His power showing us the way to go. And it's through His grace. 
through your and it says Christ's salvation through your faith and this salvation is not of yourself or of your own doing it came not through your own striving but it's a gift of God grace is a gift from God and then you move on to the next one says verse 9 not because of works and you can't do this because of works you do this by believing and obeying Jesus following Jesus and doing what he says that's how you walk by grace and you do what Jesus has commanded you to do through obeying His Scripture. Amen. Obeying what He's taught, what He said, and what He did, the apostles and their doctrine, taking me and you to a place we've never been before in Him. Amen. That's how we follow Jesus, follow what He's taught, what He said, and what He's did. And in Romans chapter 6, we're going to chapter 6 and verse 14. We'll find out for chapter 6 and verse 14. I went to 8 and 14. That's a good one too. For all that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. So that needs to be one you quote all the time. I, I am a son and daughter of God because I'm led by the Spirit of God. But in Romans chapter 6 and verse 14, he says, For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you since you are not under law as slaves but under grace as subjects of God's favor and mercy. We're not under the law. We're under grace. We're under the, 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 the grace that God provided for us at the cross through Jesus when He took our sins away and we didn't deserve it and made a way that me and you can live in this life and sin no more. But we can follow Him and do exactly what He says and, and follow His, His, His the unctions of the Holy Ghost, which the verse I just read, being led by the Holy Ghost, we're sons and daughters. See, grace come into the new covenant that made a way for me and you to follow Christ, to follow Jesus and everything He said and did in Scripture because He lives inside of me and you now. And the Holy Ghost was sent to lead, guide, and direct us in everything that we do. So let's turn over to Romans chapter 11. In verse 6, it says, But if it is by grace, if it's by grace, this is Paul telling us here, he's giving us really a, a question. If you go back to, let's go back to verse 5. So, to at the present time there is a remnant, a small believing minority. And that's, that, that's still true today. There's a small believing minority that believe the Word of God it is forever settled in heaven. And that's what me and you have to go by is His Word. And not what man comes up with, not what denominations come up with, but by what Jesus come up with. By what comes from, from the mouth of the Messiah Himself. Amen. Romans 10, 17. The message that comes from the lips of the Messiah Himself. That's how we build faith in our life. You've got to listen to Him and do what He says. It says, a small believing minority selected, chosen by grace, which is God's unmerited favor and graciousness. Then verse 6 says, but if it is by grace, His unmerited favor and graciousness, it's no longer conditioned on works or anything men have done. No, it's, it, ain't, it ain't got nothing to do. When it comes to grace, it's everything Jesus did. It ain't nothing me and you done. But that don't mean me and you, once we become a Christian in Jesus, following Him and we're in Him and He's in us, that we don't do works for the kingdom. See, a lot of people get, they, they read these scriptures and they take them, well, it's not by works, so I ain't got to do no works. No, once you get saved, you'll do works for the Master because it's works for the kingdom of the living God. Amen. You, you can't do no work to get saved. But after you get saved, you're going to do works for His kingdom to follow Him and do what He says. Otherwise, grace would be no longer be grace. It would be meaningless. See, if we, could, if we could work for the grace that He provided for us at the cross, it would be meaningless. There would be no need for Him to come. But because He came, did it all, and it's all because of Him and what He did, me and you got nothing to do with it, so me and you can't mess it up. Me and you can't mess up the grace of Jesus Christ. All we can do is accept it, we can follow in it, live according to it, and, and do what it says so that me and you don't sin no more. How do you not sin no more? You follow grace, the ability that it gives you to walk through this life and not walk in sin. That's how you do it. Praise God. Let's go to James chapter 4. Hallelujah. James chapter 4. Still talking about grace. Grace is... God's unmerited favor, we know that, but really it's a decision made in one's heart if you're going to follow Jesus or you're not going to follow Him. That's what, that's what grace is, it really means. It's the ability of God's love to change you. So a lot of people, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. That's true, but here comes the grace, and the only way you're going to get that grace and that love in your life to change you 
is by believing, relying, and clinging to, and trusting in God. Amen? So that's how you do it. But in James chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, But He gives us more and more grace, more and more grace. That's the power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency in all others fully. See, the power of the Holy Ghost lives inside of me and you through grace. And that power in the Holy Ghost gives us the ability to face more and more danger, more and more evil tendencies, and to face it fully convinced that Jesus knows everything, He knows how to do everything, and we don't have to question Him of nothing because He knows everything. That's what grace will give you. The, the Master knows everything. That is why He says, God sets Himself against the proud and the lofty. Don't be I mean, proud and haughty. Don't be haughty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. So you got to be humble enough to receive what He's got for you through grace. you got to be humble. you got to walk humble in this life to receive what the Master has for you. To receive what He's done for you at the cross. To receive that He took your sins away. And He wants you to live that way towards everybody you come in contact with. If He forgave you, you, for, you should forgive everybody. You shouldn't hold nothing against nobody if He forgave you. All this stuff going on in the world today, the grace still there for every single one of them. I don't care who it is. You got to love President Biden just as much as you love anybody else. You got to take his sin away. You got to love him. Take his sin away. He don't deserve it. Uh, and, and everything they're doing, you can't. You ain't got to believe and want none of that to happen. But you got to pray for that office that he told us to in the Bible to pray for the office of the presidency, so we can live a quiet and peaceable life. Amen. People got to. The Bible says, "Love your enemies." I mean, how are you gonna get away from that? If he, if he's the enemy, how are you gonna get away from loving him? If Jesus said, "Love your enemies," then he said, "Love everybody like he loved you." Forgive everybody like he forgave you. That's how grace shows up. Grace has the power to do that. And if me and you will lean towards grace, verse six there tells us again that it's the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us to meet any evil tendency, these evil tendencies, and all others fully. So He's able to come inside of me and you if we we'll listen to Him, do what He says, follow Him, and grace is able to forgive anybody, no matter what they've done against us, or no matter what they've done against our country, no matter what they've done against the kingdom of God. You're able to forgive them because He told you you could. I mean, He give us the ability to do that. Jesus give us the ability to follow Him through grace, to do exactly what He's told us to do, and to come out on the other end uh, being in Him. Not smelling like a rose, being in Him. Being in Jesus. And what He taught you, what he, uh, the things that He taught you to do, and the way He taught you to go forward. That's how me and you follow Him, is, is through the grace that He supplied for me and you to follow Him in and through. Amen. We got to learn to follow him and do what he says. In Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews one one book back there. Let's go to Hebrews chapter uh, four. Hebrews chapter four. Praise God. And verse verse fifteen says, "For we do not have a high priest who is unable." See, we don't have a high priest uh, in Jesus Christ who's unable. We we got a high priest who's able. Jesus is able. Amen. He's able. He's able to do abundantly above all that me and you could ask or think. He's able. So we don't have a high priest that's unable. No, we got one who's able. Able to do what? Able to understand. Able to sympathize. And have shared feelings with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities through the assaults of temptation. In other words, no matter what in this life you get tempted by, no matter what is coming against you, no matter what is tempting you to sin, Jesus is telling us here, you know, through the Spirit of the living God, that it don't matter what comes against us. It don't matter. Jesus uh, shared in all of those temptations. He was tempted like in every way that me and you could ever be tempted. In every way we could be tempted, Jesus was tempted. Well, what happened? Well, Jesus, it tells us here, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. See, Jesus can tell me and you, if we come to Him, He can tell me and you how to be tempted and not give in to that temptation to cause sin to come out of our life. He, he can tell us, how, how do you do that? Well, if you go back to verse 14, it says, Insomuch then as we have a great high priest who was already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession of faith in Him. How are you going to get through these temptations and things that are coming at you? 
trying to knock you down, trying to get you to follow them and do what they want you to do, trying to get you to be angry, and trying to get you to uh, sin, and trying to get you to be mad and upset with people, trying to get you to do all kind of manner of evil. How are you going to win in that? You got a profession and confession of your faith in Jesus that Jesus is enough, and He'll bring you through every single one of them without sinning. He'll show you how to come out of it without sinning. Amen. Because then, if you go to verse sixteen, it says, "Let us then fear, fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's." unmerited favor to us sinners. God's unmerited favor to God's ability of love working inside of me and you. Let us draw boldly and near to the throne of God's of the ability of His love that will work inside of me and you, which is the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace, find the ability of His love to help in a good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Man, that's what grace does. That's what the Father does. And we pray and come to His throne of grace, the ability of His love to work in our life and to straighten everything out. Guess what? It's appropriate help, well-timed help, and it comes just when you need it. So we got to come into His presence and do what He says and follow Him and know that by grace, He's going to take care of us. By grace, He's going to watch over us. And by grace, He'll bring us through it. And by grace, He'll show us how to walk in this life and not walk it in sin and not follow sin and not do what sin wants us to do. What does sin want you to do? It wants you to fall short. It wants you to fall short of the grace of God, fall short of the glory of God. Sin wants to take you away from God. Sin wants to break the fellowship with God. Sin don't want you to have a time with the Father, a time with the Holy Ghost, and a time with the Son. He wants to take that time away from you to be with them. He wants you to be on your own. He wants you to think that you have to do it all. But we got to follow grace to know, no, we just got to do what the Master's told us to do. We got to follow Him and do exactly what He says. We got to follow Him through grace. We obtain grace, the ability of His love to operate in mind in your life. Don't take grace and think you can do what you want. Take grace to do the things that you don't want, that you won't do them. And the things you want to do, you will do them. You know, Paul in, in Romans 6 tells us he did the things he didn't want to do and didn't do the things he wanted to do. Well, grace makes you do the things you want to do and not do the things you don't want to do through the ability of God's love operating in you. Amen? Because it shows us how Jesus was tempted in all things, just like all of us are tempted. But if we'll follow Jesus, He'll show us how to come out of that temptation without sinning. How do you do that? By following grace. By applying grace to your life. By getting the ability of God's love and operation in your life. Uh, look, we, we need to learn to look to people uh, <clears throat> through God. Look through God before we see people. And quit looking at uh, uh, people and then looking at God. We, we don't need to be looking at people and then at God. We, that, we, that way we can be mad and upset with people. But if we look to God and then look, look to people, we can't be mad and upset with people because you see Him first. You see how much He loves everything. How much He loves. How much love He went through for me and you that He gave His only Son for us. So He has us to give our life as, and be tools of righteousness in His hand. So in these last days, we need to be tools of righteousness working in the hand of an almighty and powerful God. Bringing people to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Getting people healed and set free. And getting people that are wrapped up in addictions, getting them set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Through grace. Showing them the ability of God's love working in their life. And that's what He wants us to do. He wants us to be tools in His hands. Glory be to God. And we, we, we already... Uh, let's go back to Ephesians again. Ch uh, chapter 2. We've already did went to this, but let's go back and look at that again right fast. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. We have to follow the Word, do what Jesus teaches us, do what His... His doctrine that came from the lips of Messiah Himself to build more on us. You say, well, some scriptures read over and over. That's exactly right. Because by the message that came from the lips of the Messiah Himself, that's how faith comes. And to it, remember, says, grace, it's not a free gift from God. It's not a free gift from God. It's, a, it's His unmerited favor that we are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Ain't that amazing that His grace delivers us from judgment? 
How does grace deliver you from judgment? Well, most people think they take that and say, well, grace came so we don't have to worry about repenting or anything anymore. No, you repent. You have to turn from darkness to light, from, from the devil to God. You have to do that to get forgiveness to come to you. So grace is, is not there for you to think, well, I'm delivered from judgment. I can do what I want to. No, uh, grace gives you the ability to walk in love, the ability to, 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 to do what Jesus said so you don't have to come into judgment because there's no sin there because His grace has kept you from it. And then if you do fall and you need Him, then grace is there. If you repent and turn from that darkness to Him, turn from what the devil wants you to do to God, that grace is there in power, giving you the ability of His love working in your life to forgive you and set you free. And He don't remember it no more, so you shouldn't be remembering it. And you shouldn't be walking according to it. And you shouldn't be letting the devil hold you back. Hey, just repent and move on with God. Repent and move on with Jesus. Repent and move on with the with the ministry He's called you to do. The ministry He's called you to walk in. Because He's called everybody to ministry. Amen. The ministry of reconciliation. So reconcile people back to the Master, which is Jesus Christ, which is uh, the, the Holy Ghost, which is God the Father. Amen. We are led by the Spirit of God. Then that He calls us the sons of God. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Man, that, that right there is a, a great and wonderful song uh, that, that saved what I used to be an old ranch, but now I'm saved and walking according to His Word. Amen. I, I'm not just an old sinner saved by grace. I was an old sinner and I got saved by grace. And now through the ability of His love, walking according to His Word, He calls me a saint. Amen. So you believe what the Word says or you don't. I choose to believe what the Word says. Amen. He is my Redeemer. He is the Lord of my life. He is the, the, the bright shining star, the morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000 angels. He is the bread of life. That's who Jesus is to me. Throughout the whole Bible, you can find the Master operating in this Word and telling you exactly who He is because He wants you to follow Him and do what He says. Amen. Well, in Romans chapter 5, <clears throat> let's start with verse uh, 6. While we were yet in weakness, powerless to help ourselves, at the fitting time, Christ died. Christ died for in behalf of the ungodly. Y'all know Christ died in behalf and for the ungodly? Why? Because the Father had told Him to. So He disobeyed what the Father said. And because of that, He gave His life for me and you so that we don't have to be ungodly more. If He gave His life for the ungodly, it's because He don't want us to be ungodly no more. Verse 7 says, Now it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life even for an upright man. Through, though perhaps for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor, someone might even dare to die. You might even dare to die if it was for, you know, for a noble man, for somebody that's worth dying for. Not just for old popper out there and an old beggar or anybody out there. You wouldn't want to give your life for them. But see, God shows in verse 8. He shows and clearly proves His own love for us by the fact that while we were all yet sinners, we were all sinners, Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One, died for us. Christ the Anointed One he gave His life for us when we were yet sinners. When we were yet, we wasn't worthy. We wasn't something that uh, w w w you could look at and want. But yet He gave His life for me and you. He gave His life for you because He loves you. And verse 9 says, Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by Him from the indignation and wrath of God. Man, because of what He did for us at the cross and gave His life for us, if we will follow Him and through grace let the ability of God's love come into our life, let the ability of God's love come in and change us, let the ability of God's love come in and make us right with Jesus, if we will let that happen, how much more, how much more and how much certain of that should we be that Jesus, what He did at the cross, has saved us from the indignation and wrath of God. For Verse 10 says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved daily. 
Saved means daily delivered from sin's dominion through His resurrected life. The Bible says the same Spirit that raised Him from the dead dwells in us. And then it tells us here that resurrected life saves us, brings us away from, delivers us from sin's dominion. So if sin is dom dominating in your life and you, you can't get away from that sin, it may be that you need to get saved to really get away from the domination of that sin, to really give your whole life to Jesus, to follow Him and do what He says. Because verse 11 says, Not only so, but we also rejoice. We also rejoice in exultingly glory in God in His love and perfection through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have now received and enjoy, we enjoy our reconciliation. Man, we receive and we enjoy our reconciliation in Christ. So that's what grace is for. Grace is to come to, to make us uh, people in Christ a better person in Him because without Him, we can't do it. But in Him, He'll make us the, uh, the perfect, righteous gift that He's going to present to the Father of what He did for us through His blood. Jesus is our gift. And we're supposed to pursue Him like a gift. Well, you've got to receive a gift. So you need to receive what Jesus has done for you. Quit making excuses of why you ain't living for Him. But let Him live His life through you. Through grace, He'll give you the ability of God's love to take all that junk out of your life. Then you can quit making excuses and follow Him. Amen. Grace is the ability of God's love operating inside of me and you. The ability of His love, God's love, working inside of me and you, showing us a better way in Christ. And I just, when, when you read this stuff and study this stuff, you're so happy what Jesus did for us in the New Testament and for the church. Man, it'll make you want to follow Him and do exactly what He says and quit making excuses why you're not doing it. Hey, we've got to learn to follow Jesus and do what Jesus says. Not, not what we think, what the preacher thinks, what the de denomination thinks, but what Jesus says. And if your preacher, friend, uh, anybody in your family is telling you what Jesus said, then you can follow it. But not just following, their, this is what I thought. This is what I think. Uh, no, I don't, I don't need to know what you think. I, you can tell me something that may you know, bring me to better understanding of Jesus, but if it takes me away from Jesus, then I don't need to hear it. I don't need to follow that. I don't need to be wrapped up in that. Amen? Well, we love you and hope you had a, have a good week, and we'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. coming ready to worship the Master, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Well, we're so thankful. Man, it is altar call time. Praise God. So if you're here today, you know, if you listen to the message today, and uh, we're just so thankful that you joined in with us today. We're, and if you need to give your whole life to Jesus right now, we want you to, 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 to repeat after me. Say, Father, I come to you today. I believe your word. I've been convicted today of sin in my life. Lord, I thank you for rescuing me from my sins. I thank you for shedding your blood and presenting an offering to the Father that took away all my sin. Now, Father, I believe right now in Jesus. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. Father, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And according to your word right now, I'm born again. Now, Father... I've believed in Him. I'm relying on clinging to and trusting in Him. Now, Father, make me a disciple. Show me Jesus' doctrine and let someone put me under someone that will teach me how to follow His doctrine and live in accordance with it. If you don't have a church home, Make your church home true Christian fellowship and come and let Pastor Robert be over you in the Lord. And I'll teach you how to follow Jesus through the teachings of Christ. Amen. Now, if you've uh, given your whole life to Jesus, man, just send me a, a uh, if you got my phone number, send me a text. If you don't, then send me an email. Just, just, just please take the time and send me an email at GodIsSlapAwesome at BellSouth.net. So I can give a praise report on the air of what God's did in your life. Amen. Hey, and that goes for all y'all watching that's in the church and God's doing things for you. I've been telling you now to send me praise reports to my email address or text me. 
And if you've got one and ain't done it, then people are missing out on hearing your report because the Bible says, make your deeds known among the people. So if he's done anything for you, you need to let me know through email or through a text so I can do it on the next service and say, man, we just want to praise God for God doing this in so-and-so's life. Amen? Hey, we're so thankful. And Lord, right now, we're, we're believing that your word says we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We can send your word and people can get healed. So right now, if there's any problem in your body, the doctors gave you a bad report, no matter what it is, right now I ask you to put your hand on that. I'm going to stretch forth my hand. I'm believing right now in Jesus' name. The anointing is flowing through this, coming into you wherever your hand is, and we're driving out that demonic force that's trying to attack itself to your body, and you're going to walk totally healthy, healed, and whole. You're a healed woman in a healthy body. You're a healed man in a healthy body. Now just receive that, and receive it with thanksgiving, and praise God that you've been delivered from whatever that circumstance is. Amen? And just let him know how thankful you are that you're walking in victory in Jesus. Amen. And we're just so thankful for y'all. We can't wait to, to, to see y'all again. And, uh, and we love y'all so much. And uh, uh, we, we praise God for you. We praise God for you. We're so thankful for you. Hallelujah. And don't forget, if you're doing your offering by mail, don't forget to send it. If you're doing it by the church, drop it off, put it in the slot. And we're so thankful for y'all, your faithfulness. And we praise God for you. And we thank God for you. Amen. And we thank God for more coming. In Jesus' name, amen.